like how's it going everybody so as we patiently wait for the release of the finals hopefully sometime in the very near future i wanted to make a video today discussing how and why i think the finals should inspire all future fps games that are going to come out so what truly makes a good fps game you could argue immersion you could argue how the gunplay feels the objective of the game the nuances of the game and more modern shooters movement and the creative liberties that the developers take you could also argue that what makes a very good fps game is how free the developers are to be creative and shun the norms of the more boring stale and expected games that have come out recently games that come to mind when i think of great fps titles so games like battlefield one which uh, i think unanimously we can uh, agree is probably the most immersive game <laughs> at least i've ever played great and, and what's what's really special about a game like battlefield one is the extra steps and extra lengths the developers went to to make you feel that immersion uh, things like sound design things like uh, uh the the players on your team the screaming the yelling the actual feeling that you're in a war zone in a war the crazy uh hectic nature of 32 v 32 fights of course battlefield one is a world war one game so there isn't many crazy movement you know it's it's tank combat it's old guns a lot of them single action bold action not too many automatic weapons there are some but but what makes that game great is the immersion and of course there are some developers uh who worked on that game who are, who are now at embark about 25 percent of embark's developers so i've read uh our former dice developers and you can see that come through with building destruction with the level of effort they put in sound design i watched a video and you can go and watch this yourself it's on uh the finals youtube page where it shows you exactly how and where and what they do to get the sounds of the guns uh, so realistic in their game uh, they filmed it in sweden and they go to like an empty an unused quarry and they shoot blank rounds uh, of guns to get the sound design it's incredible specifically for a game like battlefield one the immersion comes from the things around you it comes from the building collapsing and falling on you and killing you it comes from the sound of the tank or the anti-tank uh, weaponry shooting you know two feet to your left uh when it when a mortar hits and your player goes deaf for a couple seconds that, that all adds to the immersion it's incredible another game that comes to mind that came out actually around a very similar time to bf1 but didn't quite get the love and respect it maybe deserved at the time uh since then it now has is titanfall 2. crazy game the precursor to apex legends and in many ways has more heart and soul than apex has uh but it's a, it's a the definitive movement shooter you can wall run you can double jump and it's all about crazy cr the crazy crazy things you can do while having a gunfight the titan mech aspect caters to the people who want to run around and you know not necessarily fly up on the walls but just want to kind of have a have a, have a good slow time in, in the big boys and shoot people but a game like that the uh, i don't think there's a bad map on titanfall 2 the map design fantastic it's not three lane garbage that uh call of duty has given us over the years there have been some good call of duty maps of course and those are the ones that get remastered year over year over year but the three lane design it's kind of a thing of the past especially with games like fortnite or apex and anything in the battle royale genre what br has really shown us is how creative developers can be in map design different points of interest around the map map size varying big maps small maps and the finals has a little bit of all of this the maps are more akin to you know traditional i don't, I don't want to say traditional team death or like domination maps they're kind of in the middle they're smaller than br maps but they're bigger than your traditional uh team death match or domination or search and destroy maps it's got a battle royale feel but it's still team based even in the uh ranked tournament modes when there's four teams of four 
going at it to move on. Yes, there's a bit of... Actually, there's maybe more than a bit. There's a good bit of chaos and the hectic nature of a battle royale, but it's still team-based. And that's what's so impressive uh, with the finals, is that it wraps all of these elements together from so many great games. When my, when my friends and I are just kind of you know reminiscing about the game and talking, we, we, we always say it's got the best of every good game that we've ever played. It's got the best of Overwatch, it's got the best of Rainbow Six Siege, it's got the best of Battlefield, kind of, in a way, you know, it's because of the destruction. Battlefield 1 has different, you know, aspects, like I said. But it's got the best of so many games that we've played, and that's what makes it so cool and so special. Even games like Hunt Shoda, much slower game, still a very, very good game uh, in its own regard as a, as a type of extraction shooter. But it's similar in that both Crytek and Embark have taken extra steps to add immersion and detail to the game that once you play these games that are good, like the finals or Hunt Showdown or Battlefield 1, you realize what a first-person shooter can be. And it's not just redundant Call of Duty year over year over year. Now, yes, there's been some good iterations of Call of Duty. 2019, Modern Warfare was actually a pretty good game. I enjoyed that game. But I haven't played Call of Duty in a couple years, but I've watched a decent amount of it. And it's just the complaining of the same thing over and over again. It's just sad to see from a franchise that was the dominant game of a decade ago. And now they've fallen to just, you know, chucking out $70 DLCs in the past couple years. It's kind of sad. It's sad to see. So, yeah, the main argument I want to make here is that the finals should, could and should inspire all future FPS titles. And now why? So first of all, is it easy what Embark in the finals is doing? No, it's not easy. Having everything server side, having the kind of destruction they've enabled in the game, and also having a smooth gameplay experience is not easy to do. And we've we've seen that from the first closed beta to the second closed beta to the open beta. Slowly, they've gotten better. The game has run better, more consistent over each beta. They've done balancing. I was super impressed, uh, especially in the first closed beta, at how many balance changes they did while conducting the test. It seemed like every other day they were rebalancing weapons, uh, changing the turret balance, switching things with specializations. They were always doing something, always messing around with something. And so another thing, just in general, is listening to the community. This is what games like Call of Duty don't seem to do as well as other games is listen to what you know people say in your discord listen to what people say on twitter things like that and so just the objective of the finals you know a cash out game it's more than just kill the bad guys there in it, it, it can involve planning it can involve surprise attacks it can involve defending it can involve attacking in different ways other than just running in there and trying to cap the objective like a domination game there's a lot higher thinking required to do well in a game like the finals now the crazy nature of the explosives and the and, and the wild destruction adds to the mayhem that always ensues in any game you play but it but there's more there's more than just i gotta shoot this guy that's you know that's it that's okay great what what's next there's more than that the finals map design is also pretty good for the most part uh, they've got three maps as of the open beta, and while Skyway Stadium does kind of mesh Monaco and the Soul map together, it offers unique and uh, singular things like the bigger bounce pads, a little more verticality on some places, and that's kind of a theme you see as well, especially on the Soul map, on the Korea map, is the verticality that you can uh, play with. Like when the, whenever the middle section is available to play on, a lot of verticality going on. They're just getting up to it from one thing, but then playing up there as well. So map design, another huge thing that, that uh, developers should take away from the finals and look at and say, can we uh, replicate this in our own unique way and make something good? A game that I actually just thought of that comes to mind, which uh, incorporated just a kind of a different way 
of playing another classic game was Splitgate, if you guys played Splitgate at all. We loved that game for a while. That game got really big right before Halo Infinite came out. Halo Infinite ultimately ended up not being, I wouldn't call it a total flop, but it was a it was a pretty big, they, they dropped the ball uh, on that one, 3-4-3. Uh, three, three. We thought that game was going to be really good, really well supported, ended up not being that. But Splitgate just kind of ended up being a better version of Halo. You had portals you could use across the map. Very creative idea, very fun idea. You could shoot through the portals. Just a fun, fun game, uh, arena shooter to play. And we really enjoyed uh, weeks and even months on that game. Ha had a very fun time. But moving forward, so in, in the year 2024 and on, I really think well, once we get the finals to release, which hopefully is coming sooner rather than later, as I said, once we get that, Developers are going to take notice, and I really hope it ends up being a case of Embark leading from the front, and with the interest that was had during the open beta, I think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to be a pretty big game on release, the finals. And they've got another one, Ark Raiders, in the works. I played the alpha, uh, the closed alpha, really enjoyed it. My brother and I put uh, over 12 hours in each to the closed alpha. Unique game, third person. Uh, extraction looter shooter good map designs couple maps uh, uh, to start but just fun totally different than the finals and it's good to see a developer understand what two kinds of games two kinds of uh, shooter games are really starting to become popular nowadays we're just in general moving away from the battle royale era you can just kind of feel it you can see and moving into I mean the competitive shooting games are always going to be popular and big because people just want to be competitive. It's just the nature of uh, guys. But moving towards more of an extraction type shooter where the player determines when the game's over. You can you could literally just go in and do two things and leave. You don't have to fight anybody. In, in extraction looter shooters, you don't even have to engage if you don't want to. And Doc has talked about this a little bit, that that's kind of where the industry is moving. But that's just kind of where games are heading. So, and also to mention... Uh, many, many of these new games are being made on the Unreal Engine, including the finals. And so hopefully people see that uh, developers surely will see that games made on Unreal Engine can look like the finals and they can then in their own creative way kind of make whatever they want. But I really hope that they take ideas and ba the basics of what the finals has given us so far and really go out and create something good and new and fresh and exciting to play. Uh, in the FPS world. All right, that's all we got today. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, please drop a like and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel here. Okay, we will hopefully talk to you guys very soon. See you, kids.